eye to eye with thyroid eye disease. Autoimmune thyroid disorders affect the whole body. Hi, Dr. Charles So Parker again. Welcome to Pace of Production's fifth section of a 10 part series on thyroid eye disease. Before we discuss the eye findings in section six, it is worth remembering that autoimmune thyroid disorder affects the entire body. This is not a disorder limited to the thyroid and the eyes. The material in this series is meant to be easily understood. Parts, however, may be somewhat dense and you may wish to review particular sections. If you have suggestions on how to improve this series, we welcome your comments. You may find us on the web at www.plasticeyesurgery.com, email us at info at pesahouston.com, write to us at Plastic Eye Surgery Associates, 3730 Kirby Drive, Suite 900, Houston, Texas, 77098, or telephone us at 713-795-0705. In the first video of section two, we showed this cartoon of a thyroid cell or thyrocyte with a TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone receptor or docking station sticking off the end of the cell. Usually TSH binds to this receptor and turns on the production of the thyroid hormones T4 and T3. We discussed how autoimmune antibodies or sometimes autoimmune cells called lymphocytes may bind to these receptors Sometimes these autoimmune antibodies are stimulating, behaving like TSH to turn on cell activity. And sometimes they are inhibitory or blocking, decreasing production of T4 and T3. For reasons that are not yet entirely clear to physicians and researchers, the TSH receptor or docking stations are present not just in the thyroid gland on thyrocytes, but on other very specific cells throughout the body as well. As you might imagine, in most places where the TSH receptor is found, autoimmune antibodies will bind to those receptors and induce changes in those cells too. Interestingly, not everyone with ATD or autoimmune thyroid disorder develops the same systemic findings. This goes along with what we said in section three about variable expressivity and may have to do at least in part with autoimmune antibodies that the person has. Remember, there are several different kinds of autoimmune antibodies. The most common tissue involved in autoimmune thyroid disorder is, of course, the thyroid. The second most commonly involved tissue is the eye and the area around the eye. Thus the name thyroid eye disease. As we discussed before in section three, not everyone with autoimmune thyroid disorder has a thyroid hormone abnormality, and not everyone with eye findings has a measurable thyroid problem but somewhere around 30% of people with known autoimmune thyroid disorder will show signs of eye involvement. In the section six videos, we will discuss the range of eye findings in this disorder. About 8% of people with autoimmune thyroid disorder or ATD will have involvement of their skin, but it is only the skin dermal fibroblast cells that have TSH receptors that are affected and oddly enough, these are found mostly on the front part of the legs, along the shins, and sometimes extending down onto the top part of the foot, and rarely the toes. This finding is often called pretibial myxedema. Like the eye findings, there are active inflammatory and inactive scarring phases to the disorder. The active inflammatory phase can be quite painful. There is an enzyme called hyaluronidase that can be used to inject directly into the inflamed areas in the legs during the active phase, which can arrest the progression of the skin changes. But later, when the lesions change to scarified nodularity, hyaluronidase is no longer effective. About 1% of people with ATD or autoimmune thyroid disorders get changes in their fingers and sometimes their toes. There are two types of changes that occur. The first is called clubbing, where the bones near the ends of the joints swell and enlarge. This causes an abnormal elevation of the nail bed and an odd shape to the fingertips or toes and nails. Clubbing of the nails is not specific for autoimmune thyroid disorders, as it can be seen with several other medical conditions, including heart, lung, liver, and some intestinal disorders. A more characteristic, albeit even less common, change in the bone of the fingers and toes occurs as an enlargement of the bones between the joints. 
There are many other systemic manifestations of autoimmune thyroid disorder, but the waters start getting a little muddier for two reasons. First, remember that once a person has one autoimmune disorder, they are at higher risk than the average population for developing other autoimmune disorders, and many autoimmune diseases have overlapping signs and symptoms. Second, it can be difficult to distinguish between the findings due to autoimmune antibodies and the thyroid hormone abnormalities, which, as we discussed, affect many different parts of the body. Part of the problem here is that we are once again encumbered by a name. We think of TSH as being a protein made by the pituitary whose sole action is to tell the thyroid to make more thyroid hormone. We think that because this was the first discovered effect of TSH, and so it was called thyroid stimulating hormone. Perhaps we should think instead of TSH as being another hormone in its own right with effects throughout the whole body. Joint pains seem particularly common in people with autoimmune thyroid disorder, especially in the hips, knees, hands, and feet. As we saw in the fingers, there are TSH receptors and thyroid hormone receptors in many bones near the joint spaces. Rheumatoid arthritis, another autoimmune disorder, is quite common in people with ATD or autoimmune thyroid disorder. Tissue swelling, as often happens with both autoimmune disorders and hypothyroidism, may sequester fluid in joint spaces. TSH receptors and thyroid hormone receptors are found in muscles throughout the body. Certain muscles are more densely impacted than others. For example, the muscles behind the eyes. But more about this in the next video section. Heart muscle also has both TSH and thyroid hormone receptors. It was long believed that changes in heart rates and rhythms were due solely to abnormalities in thyroid hormone levels. New evidence, however, suggests an independent role for the autoimmune antibodies and TSH itself. TSH receptors are now recognized in brain tissue as well. Many neuropsychological changes in people with autoimmune thyroid disorders have been long known, including depression, anxiety, confusion, somnolence, and even rarely psychosis associated with widespread brain inflammation, so-called Hashimoto cerebritis. There are, of course, many other apparently less frequent and less notable issues throughout the body. The essential points in this video are that, by definition, people with thyroid eye disease have an autoimmune thyroid disorder. And thus, since autoimmune thyroid disorders have systemic effects, people with thyroid eye disease often show other systemic issues.